Welcome back to the third episode of the Dark Souls 3 walkthrough. Today we're going to be going through the Undead Settlement, which is the third main area in this game. We've just beaten the second boss. So the first thing we want to do in this area is head over here to the left and we'll find some souls up here. Um, one thing I'd like to say was two things I'd actually like to say. The first is that we won't get every single item in here. I will be showing you every secret areas and how to get to all the places which seem to have some mystery behind them. But I won't be showing you every single item around the map, especially if they're really obvious and you can grab them by yourselves. And the second thing is that we have a lot to cover in this video, so I've gone ahead and killed off most of the enemies throughout the level, just to make this as simple as possible, so you don't have to watch me have all these tedious battles. So anyway, once we get to the bottom of the stairs, we want to head left and cross all the way over to the bridge, and right at the end you'll hear some sort of a voice, and loads of these things look exactly the same. These seem to be the pilgrimage people that we've seen in the opening cutscene and in the trailer, and... None of them do anything except there will be one over here to the right that you can notice is moving slightly and is alive. If we talk to him, he will go back to the Firelink Shrine and this is the start of his side quest. And then we're going to quickly run through here until the first bonfire of this area. It seems a bit pointless having two bonfires so close together, but I guess the area really does start just here, I suppose. So now we've lit the bonfire, we want to go here to our left and enter this building. There will be two enemies waiting for us at the entrance. After we've gone in, the first thing you notice over here to the right is that there is a corpse hanging from the ceiling with an item in it. So what you want to do is cut that down and it's a small leather shield. And go down the set of stairs. Before we drop all the way down to the bottom floor, we want to cut, go out onto the balcony and cut down this corpse, which we'll be picking up a little bit later. Um, this is a side quest item which we will be needing. So anyway, after we've done that, we want to come out to the right and there will be an enemy around here as well. But once we've done that, we want to... Pick up the item and then continue walking down, picking up the remaining items on the way down. Nothing too important. And this item right here, the Loretta's Bone, is the item we cut down from that corpse at the top there. We don't really want to fight everything here. We want to walk around here to the right on this bridge. The um, don't worry about the Loretta's Bone. I will be explaining what it's for a little bit later on when we head back. So don't worry about that. Once we get across this bridge, I'm going to be explaining how to get into one of the covenants, which you can only do before you kill the boss of this area. So we're going to be getting that over and done with straight away. Um, before we go too far, and all you have to do is come here to the right, go up here. Um, there's a few items and stuff you can pick up around here if you really like across these roofs to the left, which I'm showing you here. There's also an NPC that you can talk to. It looks similar to some of the cage enemies in this area. So once you go over these roofs to the right, you'll notice there's a, a big enemy over here, which is similar to some of the other enemies we have seen. Um, this one will have a cage on his back, however, so do not attack him. He is not an enemy. But before we do do anything with him, don't get even close to him. We want to come over here to the back, and we want to shoot down this corpse. So now I would like to point out this corpse, if you wish to get the item, you would have to go all the way around. Before resting at a bonfire, so I'd recommend doing this again later on once you've already cleared out the level or whatever. Seeming as if you do rest at a bonfire, you have to come back up here and knock the corpse down yet again. It, um, what it is, it's a ring. I cannot remember what it quite it was. You'll be seeing it on screen here as this is pre-recorded and voiced over afterwards. I just wanted to point this out so you knew about it. Really, you can't even get to the area right now until you already cleared out a bit of the uh, more of the level. Anyway, I will point out exactly where it is once we do get there. So anyway, now we've got that over with, we do want to stand right behind this NPC and press examine on the cage that he's carrying on his back. This will make us get into the cage and it will teleport us to a brand new area, which is also where we would fight the boss, the second stage of the boss fight. But anyway, we'll get back into that later. We want to go straight ahead, pick up the item to the right, and then we just want to talk to this NPC multiple times and he'll give us the, the item or the mark, whatever it is, so we can be in that covenant. If you talk to him again, he will give you a homeward bone, as I believe it's the only way to get out of here at this point, so use that and go back to the bonfire. So now we're back at this area, the beginning area, as you can notice where all the enemies are, and we're going to cross this first bridge again, and instead of going to the right to do the Covenant, this which was completely optional by the way, it's just in case you did want to make sure you didn't miss the Covenant, as if you do kill the boss, you can still do this Covenant, but you have to wait until a lot later on in the game to be able to get into it, so it's worth just doing it now. And then you want to come left this way, or go straight ahead, instead of going behind this building to the right, There'll be kind of an ambush here. There's a few enemies you want to watch out for, but nothing too dramatic you can't handle. Um, up here to the right, which I don't actually pick up in the video, there is another shield, which is not, I think, really impressive, but just if you did like to know. And when you get to this point, it's actually going to be quite difficult, as you'll have a lot of enemies here, some explosive barrels, people launching fireballs from the top. So instead of trying to take all these on, what you want to do is you want to quickly drop down here to the right. This is one of the secret areas. Um, well, it's not really a secret area as much, but it is unknown to a lot of the new players. Um, be careful here to the left, there will be an enemy when you come around here. So anyway, once we pick that up, we want to walk around this pathway for a bit longer, and we'll enter this cave. And in here, there will be a hidden bonfire, which really comes in handy if you're struggling through this level, as it's a really nice place to have one. So anyway, once we come up here, we want to walk onto the roofs, and you'll notice that there is a corpse hanging from the ceiling. You could just do it with a bow and arrow, I decided to do it with fire bombs. But anyway, we're, this is going to be the Patsion, which is a type of spear, which we've seen in previous Souls games. 
So anyway, once we've done that, we're going to come up here, and this is a good opportunity to clear off all the people at the top here, launching fireballs, that is, which is making it a lot more difficult to clear the area straight below us. So once we've done that, we want to walk around here, do not drop down quite yet, and we'll talk to this person in the cage. This is another NPC that will head back to Firelink Shrine. This is going to be the person that teaches us the basic pyromancies, and later on when we give him some of the tomes, he'll be teaching us some quite advanced pyromancies. This is going to be one of the main pyromancers in the game. There is another one apart from this guy. This is going to be the first one we encountered. So after we've cleared off all this, we can take the enemies down below however you like. You can throw fireballs at the explosive barrels from above if you like, or however you wish to do it. And then behind the stage, there's one more hidden sort of item, which is going to be the ring. That gives you more firepower, but it also makes you more vulnerable to fire. And anyway, round here, to the left of this building, there will be an item. Be careful, you will get ambushed by one of these little knight and assassin sort of people. So anyway, once you've taken him out, these massive stairway up there to the left where you can see that big guy will be a shortcut sort of way towards the boss battle. However, uh, the, the door what obviously unlocks it is not available yet, so we're going to have to go around here to the right. We want to go below here and enter through the cave. There will be a few rats in this cave, so be careful. They can be quite annoying. They don't seem too dangerous at the beginning, but they, they can be pretty nasty. And the big rat does leave the blood bite ring, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's definitely the blood bite ring, you, um, automatic drop off from the rat. And the Kyasters, which is the fist item, will be available down here as well. Um, so anyway, um, we want to climb up the ladder at the other end of the sewer sort of area. There will be one of the gates, which I'll be showing you. The gate you can see down there, which we can access a little bit later on. We need a key, but I'll be showing you where to get that as well. It's all a bit later on. This place is quite confusing, so we're just going to do this all in order. And here we have finally made it to the third bonfire of this area. So at this point, there's a few options we have. There's three different ways we could go. We could go back to the start and loop around the other way to get to this bonfire if you're trying to pick up the items, which is also the way you can get into the Sunlight Covenant. And there's a few other interesting items like the whip and that round there. So we're going to be showing you that one. So we're back at the main area for the third time now where all the enemies are. This time, instead of going right across this bridge like we did the previous two times, we're going to go straight ahead and then enter the building to our left. We shouldn't have to take out too many of the enemies here. It's really not necessary to engage with the big group of enemies unless you want to pick up all the items, which I think is a few embers, but nothing too important there. And anyway, we want to enter this building to the left to make sure we don't miss out on something that's pretty important. Uh, I'm not talking about the charcoal pine resin we're going to find in here to the right, nor am I talking about the souls we can knock down from these corpses and we can land on the stairs to find them. I am going to be talking about, however, what's inside that door, which if we try to approach it from this side, it will tell us that it cannot be opened from this side. So you're probably asking yourself, how do we get in this door? Really simple, just go upstairs here and there will be a hole in the floor. So you just want to drop down there and we'll find ourselves in the room, really simple. And there are two things we'll notice in this room. The first is that it's some Esther's soup which recharges our HP which is kind of nice. And the other thing we're going to find here on the table is the Warrior of Sunlight. And this is the item that allows us to enter the Sunlight Covenant, the famous Sun Bros. So that's the main reason we really even bothered coming around this route as it is completely optional as we've already done it from the other side and it will take us to the same bonfire. This hallway, um, it's kind of dodgy, there's quite a few of those cage things will come to life, luckily I've already taken them out like I said previously. Once we come out here to the right there will be a kind of hidden passage, it's not really much of a secret, and down here we will find some more souls. So now we want to backtrack back onto the main path here and continue heading down. There will be a few more enemies and someone at the top throwing stuff at it. This can be a quite a hard area, so you want to take this slow and make sure you kill everything off properly. In here there will be an ambush. There will actually be a double ambush. One will jump out at you and then one will be waiting on the ceiling for when you pick up the whip, he'll jump down behind you. So be really careful with that. And anyway, before we go down there, I would recommend coming up here to take out the guy standing at the top. So to do that, all we have to do is come a bit further forwards and then turn left and we'll come up this hand ladder and be able to take out the fat guy at the top if he did not fall down. And along with that, we'll find a nice item up there and down here we'll find yet some more titanite shards, so there's quite a few around this area. So anyway, we want to continue going down here to the right. Instead of entering the building straight ahead, we want to turn off here to our right and we'll find a roof ledge we can jump onto, which will have a rusted kind, so it's nothing really impressive, but I thought I'd show you anyway. To get to this, all we have to do is do a nice roof jump and make sure we land on the roof. So after you dropped off here to the right, you may have noticed where we are. We are back at the bonfire I was just at previously. Like I said, this is a different way to loop round to this area. This is definitely a shorter way, however, you do need to unlock the other way just to make it a lot easier. For certain other things, one, to get to the boss battle quicker, and two, to do the other secret area we're going to show you next. It's always good to have this bonfire open. As we will need to go right towards the sewers, and that sewer door just across this bridge will not be open from this side. You have to have opened it from the other side first to make it accessible at this point. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing now. So let's head off to the right again, go through the sewers. We still do not have the key to open that gate down there, like I said earlier. We will be getting that pretty soon, though, so don't worry. And uh, we come out here, obviously the enemies have respawned because I've sat at a bonfire since then. So we're just going to quickly use the power of some editing and take everything out here. There we go. 
So there'll be an item hanging off the bridge, as you have seen previously, and there's two more items up here. One which is a soul, and the other one is something behind this building. Um, there's going to be a dog guard in it if you've not killed it, so be careful with that. It's just going to be in a lore and skull, so it's not really necessary, but if you do wish to get all the items, there's another one there. And over here, we're going to continue up to the right. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that there is an NPC to the left. We're going to quickly speak to him. And just in this main plateau here over to our right is where that ring fell down from when I said just before the Covenant. Which you've seen me pick it up earlier on. That is exactly where it's going to land, right to the, just to the right of that NPC, if you're wondering. So then we just want to continue through this door straight ahead of us. And you notice the lift is coming up. Um, don't worry, it's not an enemy. It's going to be Katarina, which is a well-known character of Dark Souls 1. And he gives you a hint that he wants to go upwards and the elevator's going downwards. So you want to activate the elevator, but do not actually get on it. As if you do decide to go down, that will lead you on to the next area completely separate from this. As the boss of this area is completely optional. And you could just go on to the next area at this point. Uh, we're going to let the, the lift go down, and we're going to get on top of the lift, the next one, and this one's going to head upwards. There's another secret area here if we jump off halfway, which I will be showing you straight afterwards, but the main reason we've come up here right now is to talk to the giant at the top, which is always throwing massive spears down at a different part of the map just before the boss, which really is going to harm us a lot if we try to cross it without talking to him. All you have to do is come up here and talk to him, which will get him onto your side, which will stop him throwing spears at you. And when you do try to cross that bridge, he'll actually throw the spears at the enemies, which is really helpful. So that's always a good thing to do. And you also get a magnificent view of the whole area from up here, which is kind of nice. So anyway, on the way back down, um, we're going to quickly show you this from the bottom. You can also do it from the top, obviously, but just so you know exactly where I am. We want to get on the lift going upwards yet again. And here we're going to jump off onto this wooden sort of platform halfway up. It's quite close to the top. And we're going to talk to Katarina here again. Jump down here. There's going to be a few items in this area. This hidden area is actually quite big just to be a secret area. So we want to come down here and start the fight with this mini boss. It's really similar to the one off of Dark Souls, the tutorial boss. So it's not too hard to take out. And your nice buddy here will come down here even to help you out in the battle. Make it pretty simple. Once you've taken him out, you want to talk to your mate and he will give you a gesture as well as a beverage. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, once we've done that, we want to continue exploring this area. Over here to the left, we have a few more items. Also, you notice there are two bodies hanging down from the ceiling here, which you can shoot down really simple. One's an armor set, the other one you'll be seeing on screen. I cannot remember exactly what it is right now. So now we're going to come into this building. You want to be careful. There's a few enemies here. Um, you'll notice which ones are the, the bad guys and which ones are just part of the environment simply because you can lock onto them. Also, you can notice the color slightly different. So we're going to continue advancing here over to the right. There will be a few dogs in this area as well, so be careful, as well as another one of these cage enemies over here to the left. So now we're taking them out, we go over here to the right and there'll be another treasure chest. This treasure chest is an ambush as well, so be careful, you get some more pine resin. And you'll be ambushed by three or four of these. So anyway, once we've got rid of those, we want to come up here. I don't recommend fighting these two people, that could be a really stressful battle and you don't want to die right now, trust me. So you want to run past those and climb up onto the roof, turn here to the left and there'll be an item up here right on the platform. Which is going to be the Flynn Ring, which if you played previous Soul games, you know how exciting this is. This is a really good ring, which makes it so the less you weigh, the more damage you deal, pretty much. Um, and there's another hole more bone behind the tower. So after we jump down here as well, we want to enter this and you want to line yourself up with that platform down there, you can see. So just run up and jump and hope for the best. Hopefully you should land on it's not too difficult once you drop down here there'll be another two very exciting items which is one is going to be the Mara set which is if you play Dark Souls 2 that's always nice to have some armor sets off of the previous soul games so let's quickly put that on just so you can check it out it's quite a nice armor set and also behind this crate we are going to be getting the clone three ring which is an amazing item um what it does is it recharges your stamina a lot quicker when you have this ring equipped it it's definitely an essential that is one of the other main reasons I would recommend coming to this route, and so when we jump down here, you may notice we are actually back at the area where you came down those stairs, and I mentioned that if you go up those stairs, it would be the boss battle, so the boss battle is literally just up here to our right, however, we have not yet unlocked the door from the other side to make this shortcut available. So now we need to head back to the bonfire yet again, don't worry guys, I know this is becoming long, but we're almost there now, just two more areas and we'll be ready. So it's finally time to head on towards the boss battle area, even though we're not going to do the boss yet because we have one more secret area to explore. But anyway, we're going to come up here and when we get to this area, we want to keep your distance from the enemies. And you know, with these massive spears just come flying in from nowhere, destroying the enemies. And this is going to be the spears that your new giant friend at the top of the tower is going to be throwing to help you out. Um, if you didn't talk to him, he wouldn't actually be aiming at the enemies. He would just be aiming at random and being able to hit you a lot. So, it definitely helps to go up there and speak to him first and be able to pick up the items so he won't be shooting at you when there's no enemies remaining. Um, down there on that platform to your right is one of the most important items from this area, and also up here to the left there's going to be an item that's pretty important, um, which goes towards getting the key to go down to the sewers, which is going to be the ashes, what you can find here, which we have to give back to the merchant in the Firelink Shrine, which we aren't going to do quite yet. 
So once you've taken him out, you want to head on towards the building. Once you get to the top of the stairs, you want to make a 180 turn and jump onto the balcony here behind to find the Great Scythe. Which is so after that, just jump up to the top floor again. And once you're up here, you want to go straight ahead through this hallway. To the left will be the boss room, so you don't want to go in there yet. To the right, I'm pretty sure you're all guessing what's already through this door. We're back at this area yet again. We've been here enough time, so I'm hoping you all know where we are by now. And now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to Firelink Shrine. The main reason is because now we have the item what allows us to buy the key for the sewers. And the other one is because we got that bone. I'm not sure if you remember from the start of this video, we got an item that dropped down. So the bone that dropped down, we are going to give it to the thief here to the left, which is the thief what we saved from the previous area we were seeing. That's just to continue his sort of side quest or whatever. For now, that's all he's going to do. Um, it's going to be the person you're supposed to give the ring to. And now the other item we just got from this area where the spears was raining down, we're going to give to this woman here, which is the merchant. And that is going to allow us to buy the sewer key for 1,500. It's actually called the grave key. So now we need to head back to the third bonfire in the undead settlement yet again. This is going to be the final time we need to teleport back here. Now we want to head off to the right into the sewers again for the final time. And the key will open this doorway we're standing right in front of now. I came to uh, just to open it a second ago just to check something. But it will open this gate right here. Now when you're in this, I call these the sewers. They're obviously not the sewers. It's actually like a grave. To the right, you'll find the this character is equal to the character in Dark Souls 1, I believe. The one just before the bell tower after the gargoyles. Anyway, after that, you want to come down here to the left, we'll find an item on this ledge, which is going to be the Red-Hilted Hellbird. Now through here to the left again, and in this next room, you're going to find some skeleton enemies, along with some souls and some random items. So once you come out into this open area, you want to turn right, and as you can see, there's going to be a crystal lizard, which unfortunately I don't actually manage to catch here. And over here to the left, we're going to have a couple of Titanite shards. You don't want to hang around for this area for too long, simply because straight above us is the area where that bridge where there was a lot of those big guys. As you can see, one just dropped down here. This time you want to head back the way you came, and instead of turning left, you want to go right and turn off left here as there's nothing straight ahead. Don't do what I did, as I took a bit too long here, and somehow that big guy ended up falling into that room, which is a really bad thing. Um, it was really unfortunate. Um, I die here just after picking up the Saint's Talisman. So anyway, let's quickly get back here again, as you can see. Let's pick up our souls. And at the top of this ladder, we will find another NPC, which we talk to. She will head back to the Firelink Shrine. I believe this is the person that will teach you miracles. We'll just go out here and talk to this guy again. So anyway guys, it's going to be a really long episode, it took me a long time to organise all this, um, record it and edit and stuff. So at least I hope it does help some of you out and maybe some of the secret areas you didn't know about and stuff. I'm not actually going to do the boss battle in this video, I may do it in a separate video, it's actually completely optional. So really easy boss battles I don't believe are necessary, as this video is already long enough. So anyway guys, if you did find this video helpful, as usual, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and we'll see you next time.